This is Sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. That crust on you. Be, I'm just going to name name some of the works and then and then you just see what excites you. Okay. Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. Uh, Star Wars, The Force Unleashed. Um... Pee Wee's Playhouse. I love it. <laughs> okay, there we go. I knew I'd find it. I knew I'd find it. I knew I'd find it. I love Pee Wee. L.A. Law. Yes. You like that, right? Yes. NYPD Blue. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Sons of An Anarchy. I watched that. Sons okay. of Anarchy. No? You didn't get, okay. I didn't see it. The Get Down. Of course. Okay. And now he's here to talk about the series 24 Legacy, DB, do the honor. Who do we have here? All right, before I say his name, I got to go back in time because I'm a fan. I've been a day one fan, and I can prove it. The name Eddie Rivera might not ring a bell. Oh, my God. Eddie Rivera. <laughs> go back to the max. Yes. <laughs> I Eddie thought, Rivera was I thought a we were going. Yeah. I thought we were going back with Pee Wee's Playhouse. <laughs> no, we're going further than that. <laughs> Front me to the max. We're going further than that. Eddie Rivera was a character on my all-time favorite TV series, Miami Vice. Oh. Now, it might not sound important, but it should be because everybody knows Crockett and Tubbs. Yeah. But a lot of people don't realize that Eddie Rivera. There wouldn't have been no Tubbs. There though. wouldn't have been no Tubbs <laughs> if Eddie Rivera had not been killed because he was <laughs> Crockett's first partner. And he was also, if I'm correct, the first person killed on Miami Vice. Wow, you didn't Google all that. This is like really coming from I've you. Watched I'm this, looking I, at I, the I, vibe. It's yes. <laughs> yes. coming from you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I know this. All, all, yeah, and he didn't get to make that phone call, man. All, all right. right. Oh, all right. I'm, I'm getting it's a little deep here. All right, but one more, one more, one more, one more. Okay, one more. Go for, go. So that spawned one of the greatest genres, which is the buddy cop film, especially interracial buddy cops. Okay. Going further, he starred in <laughs> Running Scared, which I believe had the best theme song on the soundtrack, mm -hmm. Sweet Freedom. By Michael McDonald. Michael McDonald. He played Julio Gonzalez with Billy Crystal and, and the late Gregory, Gregory Hines. Hines. Yes. Greg, Greg, wow. God bless you. Right now we have Jimmy Smith. Oh, wow. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. Brooklyn in the house. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do, do you ever reflect on your legacy like that? Or, uh, or are you am just. Am I 24 legacy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good point, good point. Good. No, I, I just. Uh, I feel very blessed, of course, and uh -huh. I th sometimes that's overused, but mom taught me to say that and, you, and to make sure you always look behind you to see who's who's coming behind Yeah, to op help to open up the door. And for me, it's just been about trying to keep versatile and mixing it up and, you know, yeah. do different things. Did, 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 so in keeping it versatile was always important. Surely you didn't want to get pigeonholed into roles based on ethnicity or anything. Did that did that tend to happen? Or? Uh, yeah, it tended, it, 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 it tended to happen. Yeah. But sometimes you get that, well, when you when you make a little mark and you get the confirmation from the outside, oh, mm -hmm. he can do a little bit more than that. And you just got to be ready to... When you're getting up at bat to really to really go for it, and that's what I tell the youngins when I when I see them is like you know have your toolbox full so that when uh, your turn is up, yeah, you you you're ready to make that mark. And don't for, don't forget what whatever uniqueness got you to where you got because the business can kind of corrupt that sometimes. Jimmy we Smith is that. here, yeah. man. Um, but that's good. To, uh, I'm were, not schooling nobody. No, no, no. no. We want to get it. We want to get it. We want to get it because you were born in Brooklyn, right? I actually was born in Manhattan, but Manhattan. I lived all over New York. Uh, lived lived in the Bronx when I was young, but uh -huh. uh, my high school days, uh, yeah, Brooklyn, East so, New York, and Brownsville. So, did you take classes and like, did you study drama? Like, how did you go from? You know, Sway, I had there were all there was always teachers along the way that I don't know. I had I was talking about one of my music teachers, Mr. Newton, who mm -hmm. uh, was a beautiful pianist. Um, uh, junior high school teacher who was like a frustrated opera singer who kind of like <laughs> she did theater plays mm -hmm. uh -huh. if you were good in, if you did good in school you were in in the plane it was a big deal and there was always an education person along the way that kind of pushed me to the next level I went to high school in East New York um, Thomas Jefferson High School who at the, at the time in the 70s that neighborhood was riddled by a lot of uh, a lot of things, yeah, yeah. But there was always like a teacher along the way that kind of like took me to see James L. Jones or Raoul oh. Julian plays. That kind of again, that kind of confirmation from the outside, permission to aspire to something you know different. Uh huh. So the education thing has always been part of my. It's kind of 
in my DNA, thank oh, God. I like that, man. Jimmy Smith is here, man. We, we, we named a lot of roles that you played, a lot of uh, movies. For you, from your own personal experience, what was that definitive moment or a role or character you played that you went, wow, this took me in places to heights I haven't been? Uh, I'm going to go to something. Well, it's, it's the theater stuff for me is okay. always because of my roots were in, in, you know, working, working in the theater. But certainly on TV, when I was involved on, on LA Law, when I first started out, it, it, I just saw Blair Underwood yeah. doing yeah. some, some of the radio shows yeah. here in, in, in the building today. And it, it you knew that you had good writing and you were playing a character who was different, mm. who hadn't, you know, who uh, was opening up doors, kind of, in terms of the way what people were seeing on television. But to see young people afterwards say, you know, I'm going to go to a law school now because of the character that, uh. you know, that you played. And that makes, that's like the icing, icing on the cake, you know? Yeah. Right, when you make that impact. Yeah. You, you mentioned Blair Underwood, um, who you may not notice, Jimmy is a good friend of mine. <laughs> um, Blair and I, our kids went to the same acting class and went to school together. Oh, okay. And we would would we be remiss if we didn't ask Blair, hey, man, we got Jimmy Smith coming in here, man. If you could ask him any question, any potent, powerful, informative question in the world, what would it be? And, and, and if you want to make any comment to him, what would it say? And this is what he said. So, Jimmy, when you and your lady took me down to uh, Puerto Rico back in the day, um, and I was still single, brother, um, I just want to thank you for the introduction to the country. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Decode, please. Oh. <laughs> That's so sweet. That's that he would say something that, that he would... Yeah, well, yeah, he was on holiday, and uh, and we we brought him to the real, to, 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 to the family, to eat some rice and beans and, you know... How we do? Yeah, right. It's, how how <laughs> do you show, do? He said you, you you could tell us a lot of great stories of his experience on the island. Well, we showed him around the island. <laughs> 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 oh my god! All right, we gonna come back. <laughs> Jimmy Smith is here. We are gonna talk about Twenty Four Legacy premiering Sunday, February fifth at ten thirty on Fox. Um, and you got questions for Jimmy? Eight 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 seven four two three three four five. This is only the beginning. 24 Legacy, mm. series premiere after the Super Bowl That's on Fox. Great commercial for this. When you watch it, it makes you want to watch it. Um, we're sitting with Senator John Donovan, a.k.a. Jimmy Smith. It's here from 24 Legacy. Good premiere. morning, Sway. Good morning. Premier hey, crew. Sunday, hey. Sunday, February 5th, 1030 um, Eastern on Fox. Uh, it'll be the lead-out program for Super Bowl 51. We got a good, pretty good lead-in yeah, there, That's huh? pretty bad. That's, <laughs> that's going to be shabby. the— Yo! That that means that the the network Fox is setting you up to succeed. Oh, my shoulders! <laughs> my shoulders <laughs> feel the weight. <laughs> you know Corey Hawkins, who yeah. uh, who was in Straight Outta Compton, played Dr. Dre. His is the lead character in this, mm -hmm. and he does a fantastic, fantastic job. Really flips the whole notion of what it is to be on on its head and uh I, he's doing a great job and has his head screwed on his shoulders as a man mm -hmm. as as an actor and a man uh, of the right way and we have a really talented ensemble cast the leading as you say is not bad so I'm uh, I'm hoping for good things. Oh, I that man, you don't tend to lose, so I, I think. Uh, 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 no, you, you know, uh, the batting that. average is, is okay. I mean, had a couple of, you know, it's, it's all part of the deal. It's all part of the deal, right? But this one's going home running out of the park, yo. Oh, right, Jimmy Smith. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask because you brought up uh, talking about pressure and Corey Hawkins having taken the lead of this series, you know what I mean? And people just of course. pretty much know him from straight out of Compton and then having to be thrust in the spotlight like that. Um, 24 originally premiered in 2001, and it had a long run. And at that time, was I, I'm guessing was around when the shift happened from film to television, and the writers got better, people uh, that used to be in films used to go, started going over to TV. Mm -hmm. You've been on both sides of the spectrum as a television star and as a film star. What's been the greatest, I guess, change that you've noticed uh, from those years of when people started going more to TV? Well, the, the universe, the television landscape is expanding because of the way we consume TV. I was on the train yesterday and people watching TV on their phones, yeah. right? Everybody's, so that whole thing is, is changing. I think because of that, Writers are, are drawn more to a landscape, a canvas that they can 
that that's bigger that they can tell a story that's just bigger than a you know a film that has a beginning middle and it's more fluid so and then then especially for women for people of color uh, I think that there are more kind of opportunities because you can have, uh, you know, stations and different stations, different genres that 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 people can relate to, uh, that are that are out there because of this expanded kind mm-hmm. of universe. What's the plot of this, of Twenty Four Legacy? Uh, Corey's character is playing an army ranger who was involved in a uh, taking down a, a terrorist leader. Mm-hmm. And they come back. A cell comes back to take out his unit. his crew, his yeah, his unit in the United States. So he kind of gets sucked back into this uh, life that he has with his wife and dealing with PTSD and all of that. And uh, and be, you'll see during the course of the season, he kind of becomes an agent, mm-hmm. much like what Kiefer's character did mm-hmm. in the. In the original, but he, but the the dynamic is different because of his family, his wife, his brother. The, the, there's a whole situation that happens there that is real great story fodder, I think, for the show. And my character's on the political side. Okay, yeah, it's been a lot of politics you could probably feed off of uh, right? as of late. You know, yeah. being playing a senator. <laughs> What kind of senator would you like to be? <laughs> uh, <laughs> like a Senator McCain or? I think he's more of a kind of centrist senator. Okay. One of the things about this particular show is that we're not really, it's not really a political show in the sense of, you, you mentioned West Wing before, mm-hmm. that, you know, it's it's about politics. This is an action genre piece. And okay. I play a senator that's, okay. you know, part of that. And it takes place in one day, so. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Everything goes down after that day for, yeah. for this character. Okay, Jimmy Smith is here. We got BJ on the line from Oklahoma. What up, BJ? BJ. Oh, wow. cool. BJ. Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? What's going on, man? Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, uh, Jimmy, man, I just want to say I'm a big fan. I've been following you for a long time, and I'm going to watch the show. Thanks, B. But, um, hey, I got to <laughs> hey, I gotta ask you about Sons of Anarchy, man. You killed it on that, man. Aww. I was working with them. Thank you. The Sons crew, they were great. They were great. They were there. They became like a gang themselves. <laughs> that group, you know, they they felt it was part of the dynamic. Every show's got their own kind of dynamic, and they kind of, you know, they they kind of became a a, a, a little bit of a gang themselves. You know, they they that that helped them kind of insulate. But I think that that made it more real. Mm. Mm. They were. They said they were gang banging on the set. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I'm, sorry, I'm talking. Sorry. I'm talking about being tight. Oh, my bad, my bad. Okay, I, I read that wrong. All right, BJ, thanks for your call, man. Ricardo, good morning. He's in California. Ricardo. What up, Ricardo? Ricardo. Are you on Ricky? Good morning, Sway, Tracy G, Heather B. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, long time listener, Jimmy Smith. I'm a big fan since Mi Familia, and Oof. as a kid on um, Miami Vice, I grew up watching stuff like that. Um, Thank you, bro. I was a big fan of your show, Kane and Outlaw. Outlaw. I wish those shows would have got picked up for Damn. second seasons. But writer's um, strike. My favorite movie of all time <laughs> is Price of Glory. Oh, that thank is you, bro. The all-time best boxing movie ever made that like, nobody saw, you just, but you, Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> I watch that movie. I kid you not. At least every other week, I Aww. watch that movie. Thank you so um, much. I have to ask you: Are you going to be in the Mayan spinoff of the Sons of Anarchy, though? Ah, Ricardo's talking about the fact that they're doing uh, reboot. Kurt Sutter is doing a, a continuation of the Sons of Anarchy, but with the Mayan uh, motorcycle club. I don't want to say gang motorcycle club, <laughs> uh-huh. which uh, has a kind of Latino kind of twist to it. They haven't asked yet, but you know, I think I, I, don't, I think my OG might make an appearance here and there. Yeah, I think that that's what they need. Hey, hey, Ricardo, man, thanks for your call. You're a citizen. It's thanks, Rick. Morning. Jimmy, it's an absolute pleasure to have you on this show, man. Yes. Thank you, guys. Man, you added Thank you a whole, all so much. Yeah, you added a whole no, another layer of class to what we do here, oh, man. And I, and I appreciate and it. You guys, you guys play great music and say some powerful words to keep us positive. Oh, thank Continue you. Continue doing that. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. He noticed us. All right, 24 Legacy premiering Sunday, February 5th, 1030 on Fox. Make sure you don't miss it up next. Celebrity Wire. It's Sway in the Morning. Only on Shade 45. Yeah. <laughs>